Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB AI Tester Certification. We are in chapter 11 talking about using AI for testing and today we are moving on to the very last topic of this entire series that is 11.6 using AI for testing user interfaces. Well, this topic certainly talks about how exactly AI can be used to test a system right from the user interface, just like how we go ahead and do an interactive testing or manual testing. Using AI for testing user interfaces could be really interesting for individual testers and reduce a lot of effort when it comes to identification of objects when working and interacting with the system. But let's see what exactly they have to say it on what AI can do when it comes to testing the systems from user interface. So certainly we do have a do two parts of this particular thing, using AI to test through the graphical user interface, and second is using AI to test the GUI itself, which is, I think, pretty much the same thing, but of course, <laughs> using AI to test through the GUI. So testing through the GUI is a typical approach for manual testing, other than for component, because for component, we make use of white box testing approach, which is done at the back end at the code level, and is often the starting point for the test automation initiatives. The resultant tests emulate human interactions with the test object. This scripted test automation can be implemented by applying a capture and playback approach using some, some of the other standard commercial tools using either the actual coordinates of the user interface elements or the software defined objects or widgets of the interfaces. However, this approach suffers several drawbacks with object identification, including sensitive sen sensitivity to interface changes, code changes, and platform changes, which is certainly one of the constraints what we do see that when it comes to identification of the object, some of the capabilities are very limited and does not get into all the details of identific identification of an object. And on the other hand, of course, when the interface changes, the code has to be highly maintained. Code changes will also trigger invitation to update your script and migration may invite some of them too. Now, AI can be used to reduce the brittleness of this approach by employing AI-based tools to identify the correct objects using various criteria, example, XPath, label, ID, class, XY coordinates, and to choose this historically most stable identification criteria. For example, the ID of a button in a particular area of the application may change with each release. And so the AI-based tool may assign a lower importance to this ID over time and place more reliance on other criteria. This approach classifies the object in the user interface as matching the test or not matching the test. Alternatively, visual testing uses image recognition to interact with GUI objects through the same interface as an actual user and therefore does not need to access the underlying code and interface definitions. I think so far we have these kind of features available on some of the commercial tools already. This is nothing new to me, to be frank. When you talk about uh, determining and lowering down some of the priorities of the properties that could be done manually, I understand, but AI testing can certainly help us to reduce and prioritize more unique object properties. But when it comes to identifying an object based on image recognition is uh, inside recording is what we call it as and that has happened on UFD already from a long time. So if they are just limited to that, let me tell you this is already happening in paid automation testing tools. If interested, you can search uh, about my UFD tutorials on my other channel testing in nutshell and that would answer all the questions there. This makes it completely non-intrusive and independent of the underlying technology. The scripts need only work through the visible user interface. This approach allows the tester to create scripts that interact directly with the images, buttons, and text fields on the screen in the same way as human user, which is exactly the inside recording mode. And inside recording mode also covers the same way when we talk about testing image-based applications, which are not object based. So UFT introduced this inside recording kind of like 10 years ago, not 10 years ago, yeah, 15 years ago. And uh, they had flash based application to test or partially flash based applications where the 
objects on the screen were actually not objects of technology and did not have any properties associated and in fact have collection of images to operate a particular product and in such applications certainly the image recognition helps us to identify the object and goes in line with clicking on the visible image when executed right so without being affected by the overall screen layout um, screen layout would be a concern let me tell you because uh, if it is maximized or minimized the size of the image or positioning of the image uh, certainly would matter to extent if only it is getting resized or the pixels are getting blurred if the pixels are reduced then it may not be possible to do that the use of image recognition in the test automation can become restricted by the computing resources needed however the availability of affordable ai that supports sophisticated image recognition now makes this approach possible for mainstream use so i think certainly adding more value on top of what we already have would be certainly great help for using ai to the gui testing in fact for other tools which do not have this capability this could be an innovation but let me just be sure again that these options are already available in our some of the commercial paid tools Well, continuing ahead, of course, uh, we have another segment of the same that is using AI to test the GUI, which is almost the same thing as what we're talking about. The ML models can be used to determine the acceptability of user interface screens, example, by using heuristics or supervised learning. Tools based on these models can identify incorrectly rendered elements, determine whether some objects are inaccessible or hard to detect, and detect various other issues with the visual appearances of the GUI. That would be of great help because certainly we do understand sometimes we do have static objects on our screen which may not be accessible or may not be detected with the properties or cannot be interactable. So AI can certainly help us to identify these type of objects and determine what could be the possible ways to interact with it. While image recognition is one form of computer vision algorithm, other forms of AI-based computer vision can be based to based on or used to compare images like screenshots to identify unintended changes to the layout, the size, the position, color, font, or other visible attributes of the object. The results of these comparison can be used to support regression testing to check that the change to the test object have not adversely affected the user interface. Now that could be something really interesting, but let me add again further, there are paid tools who have image checkpoints which do the pretty much same job and you can capture an image, but this is limited to an object image. That means on a web page, if you have a section where you have an image, you can just capture the image and make sure that if the image was loaded during the execution or whether it was loaded properly at the right position. But talking about positioning of multiple images at the same time on a single page is not a current capability of the tools. So AI can certainly bring this uh, type of feasibility for automation testing to do that. And we can trigger the cross check like verification and validation steps included in the automation scripts where images can be compared during the runtime and regressions of that could certainly be very helpful. The technology for checking the acceptability of screens can be combined with comparison tools uh, to create more sophisticated AI based regression testing tools that are capable of advising whether detected user user interface changes are likely to be acceptable to users or whether these changes should be flagged for checking by a human. So of course, at any point of time, these tools can take the ownership on identifying and detecting defects. But at points, if you think that this is not something what we can really take care of, can be given back to the human to take care of it manually to observe the change. Such AI based tools can also be used to support testing for compatibility on different browsers, devices or platforms aimed at checking that the user interface for the same application works correctly on various browsers, devices and platform. So put together, of course, I think AI doing advances towards the interaction of UI testing could be really a great help and adding a lot of value towards the effectiveness of the testing being performed and certainly not cutting roles of the test engineer, but helping test engineers to do better testing in the given time. Of course, we have seen that 
the testing team certainly you know deals with so many challenges when it comes to automation testing or when it comes to identification of the objects and their attributes so given that ai should be able to detect these objects uh, from the perspective of helping with the desired you know uh, identification ways then it will be minimizing the effort required for a tester to struggle to get an object into the repository or write a script on it but let me tell you by any of these discussions we don't tell you or we don't have any kind of derivation that this will cut short on the number of testers working in the industry right so that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be getting back to you with sample questions from this particular chapter and we'll be done with this entire series. So should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.